So we've spent the last couple of months now working hard to get Atticus ready to be our off-grid family home. And while we've tackled some pretty sexy projects lately, not all projects are quite as life-changing. But we are making serious progress on finishing our to-do list, and in another month or so, we plan to say goodbye to Malta and set off over the horizon with our newest crew member in tow. And we'll get a chance to test all of these awesome new improvements. But in the meantime, there's still a lot more work to be done. It's just gonna really suck to run this cable. How did we get snagged already? Baby in the engine room. I hate to admit it, but I feel like this was easier when I was in my 20s. Mm. I am very quickly getting sent down a rabbit hole. Okay, well, we got a fuel truck coming to help us refuel because we're running low on diesel and they wouldn't tell me what time they were coming. Well, it turns out it's 8.30 in the morning and they're like on their way. Desiree's got a clogged milk duct, so she's trying to clear that. I've got the baby and all this crap and now I've got to try to get the boat ready and over to another dock here in like 30 minutes. So this is gonna be our first time moving the boat with the baby and I have no idea how we're gonna do it. And of course, as I got the boat ready to move, Isabella just wouldn't stop crying, and so Desiree wasn't able to give me a hand. Luckily, the marina was nice enough to send over a couple of guys to help me move the boat. Now, Desiree was able to get Isabella to calm down eventually, and she actually did give us a hand with lines when we docked, but had to keep Isabella in the baby carrier on her body the whole time. Now, I can single hand the boat when we're offshore and sailing, but when it comes to docking, I really need an extra pair of hands, so so this is something that Desiree and I are going to really have to figure out with time. All right, well, things got a little bit crazy was we were refueling. Um, it started hey, pouring down rain. So the marina is helping. Yeah, this will work, just towing the midship. Getting off of the dock. I'm going to give it some stern to get away from this boat. The stormy conditions picked up quickly, and cold rain and strong winds began to pin us to the dock, which can be a really sketchy situation. But the guys at the marina really knew what they were doing and were easily able to tow us away from the dock, giving me enough room to maneuver away to safety. I don't know how, but Issa's passed out in my baby chair. That's the last thing we would need right now is the wind shifting, the rain, the baby yeah, crying. Yeah. As we pulled into our slip, I couldn't help but laugh at how difficult and stressful something as simple as going to get fuel has now become now that we have a baby. But there is only one way that we can get better at this, and that is gonna be to just keep practicing. I'm sure we'll eventually figure it out, I think. So a couple of episodes ago, you may remember that we were working on our installation of our Class B AIS capable VHF radio. We talked about how Class B AIS is one that can both receive and transmit AIS information, making it so that other vessels in the area can see us on their chart plotters. And that dramatically reduces our risk of collision with large ships while sailing offshore. Now, for a couple of reasons, we were never able to show the last part of that installation. So right now we're gonna go back in time a couple of weeks to when my dad was still in town to show you the last part of that project. Okay, so now that the VHF AIS transceiver is installed, that's gonna make us a lot safer, make it easier for me to single hand this boat. The other thing that will make it a lot easier for me to sail the boat by myself is the ability to use the VHF from the cockpit. And so this is that wireless remote that's gonna be able to be out in the cockpit all the time and it comes with this sweet mount. So it'll be able to basically rest in this bad boy attached to the pedestal. This will be wired so that it'll actually charge the wireless handset when I need it. So like the VHF, this mount thing came with a really cool template. So I'm gonna tape that on to the pedestal, drill my holes and mount this bracket. Man, these paper templates make doing this stuff so much easier. Okay, cool. So that's on, and I really like the position. It's like really close to my hand. I can be steering coming into a marina and then really easily get it out of the bracket with one hand. So the next step is I've got to get into this pod here and then actually wire it to the power supply that's coming to this chart plotter and these other navigation instruments so that the moment that I turn on the breaker for all of our navigation stuff, this charger will work as well. 
Okay, now I'm gonna head down, turn on the navigation breaker and see if we're getting power to that charger. Okay, there we go. Kind of anticlimactic, but there's a tiny little charging symbol there. So that's good. So time for the final test. Let's see if it works. Grand Harbor Marina, Grand Harbor Marina. This is sailing vessel Atticus. Hey, just calling to do a radio check. Do you hear me loud and clear? Okay, cool. Very good news. I'm very excited about that. This seems like such a minor thing, but this is going to make my life a thousand times easier in certain situations when I just need a freaking radio up here. So this is great. There's one last thing I need to do, and it's so frustrating, but we need to install another GPS antenna. It's just gonna really suck to run this cable all the way up to the top of the solar arch. The good news is, is that there's an antenna up there that I'm not using anymore. We had an antenna up there for our cellular booster and we just don't use that anymore. It honestly never worked all that well anyway. And so I'm just gonna get rid of that antenna and I'm gonna use the cable that was running up to that antenna to kind of help me fish this new cable down. Now it's getting a little bit late in the day. It's like 4.45, it's gonna get dark soon. This is just around that time where I should probably just admit defeat and continue on tomorrow, but I'm gonna push and see if I can just completely finish this project today. Uh, I think this is gonna be a two-person job. Hopefully the baby will be stay asleep or something. Uh, how's the baby? Mm. I was trying to get stuff done, so I was reorganizing the V-Birth. There's stuff everywhere, and I just didn't get anything done. And it's 5 o'clock at night, and I haven't done anything for dinner yet. Well, I was about to ask you if you could help me with a project. Oh, we're a little busy right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, there you have it. I'm not going to have the super awesome late in the day final push that I wanted. I'm going to pack up starting tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Are you a protector? Yeah. All right, it is a new day, and instead of trying to bug Desiree and get her to somehow help me while the baby's asleep, I brought in the ringer. You feel like pushing some cable? You push, I'll pull. We'll see who gets there first. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right, it's a race. Every time this whole activity just blows me away. It's like every time I'm like, wait, how did I do it? Where does my shoulder go? All right, you ready, big guy? So go ahead and pull your way, and then we'll pull my way. Okay, good, hold that. Can you pull a little bit harder? Not going anywhere. How did we get snagged already? Okay, go ahead. Is it in? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try to twist it. Ah. Uh. What in the world? If we pull it all the way back out and pre-bent that tape so it got flexible, would that do anything? I mean, sure, go ahead and try to pull it all the way out. Okay, well, I think we're just gonna have to give up on that. Um, all of this was an attempt to get the antenna to mount here and then the cable to go into the hole that's already here and then down or so. Now I'm gonna use my fiberglass wire running kit. So I'm gonna shove these up the tubing from the compartment and then attach a little string to the top, pull that string down, and use the string to pull the wire through. Okay, go ahead and take a little more slack. Okay, that's good. So once we had finished running the wire through the solar structure, it was time to start to run it through the boat to the nav station. Yes, got it. Okay, well, we've run that entire cable halfway through the boat, like probably 25 feet or something. And we've gotten every inch of slack out of the cable that we can. There's the terminal, there's where it needs to plug in. And there's like almost no slack. I can't believe that that actually worked. Wish I could say that was skill. Yep, good job. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, let's see how we did. VHF. Nice, okay, we got a position. Hallelujah. Are you happy it's over? You think you wanna go for a walk now? Oh, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How's, the, okay. how's the patient? Oh, she got her first three vaccinations today. How's the baby? 
Oh no. Can you smile? Hi. <laughs> what a good smile, baby. Well, I've been derailed from the project that I thought I was going to do, which honestly, I'm basically just in a constant process of getting derailed from one to the next to the next. So the next thing is here in the V birth, I've been starting to smell kind of like a moldy, mildewy kind of a smell. It turns out that I removed this headliner over here and there's definitely quite a bit of mold. This right here is the foredeck and so I think it's mostly just condensation underneath these headliners and then that liquid just kind of sits there and is trapped there. First step is I'm going to remove the other two headliners. To my surprise, there was basically no mold whatsoever under the other two headliners. I think what happened is that a long time ago, one of the screws that held the first headliner in place had stripped and caused that headliner to droop down away from the ceiling. So while the other two headliners were pressed firmly against a ceiling and were able to act as beer koozies keeping condensation to a minimum, the starboard headliner had an air gap between it and the ceiling which led to condensation and mold. Okay, that worked really, really well. There's zero mold or any black stain left over. So while I'm letting that dry, I'm gonna take these panels outside, clean them a bit, and let the sun really kind of dry them out. All right, well, we've been in Malta for, I don't know how many months now, coming on six months. I'm having a great morning. Isa just went on her walk with Jordan, so she's nice and happy. I actually am eating breakfast while she's hanging out, which is crazy. I feel like a lot of people regarding pregnancy have told me things like, it doesn't get easier, you just get better. And I feel like to some extent that's true, because I'm definitely way more efficient than I used to be. But I also think Isa is getting a lot better. I mean, when she was an infant, she would never just hang out and not be screaming her head off. So anytime she is like this, or sleeping is when I just like run around the boat and like try to get things done. I actually did yoga on the dock today. I've tried to just put Issa in the baby carrier while I do chores, but it doesn't always work out that well. This is not that bad. It's not that bad. You don't like that carrier, do you, huh? I'm gonna throw in a load of laundry on my own boat. So, I don't know, it's feeling like a good start to the day. What do you think, bud? Yeah, yeah, it's been a huge change. It's night and day, Yeah. because you actually feed yourself yeah. now. Yeah, it got to a point where like, I wasn't eating enough, so I would just be lightheaded and tired and grumpy. <laughs> so I was kind of a zombie monster. Isa was a little, a little crybaby, huh? Weren't you? Yes, you love to cry. Okay, well, I'm gonna finish eating, okay? Yeah, okay. Bye, bye, kicker. So for today's project, I'm gonna be fixing something that I kind of goofed up a little while back. You probably remember when I was installing the washing machine and drilling through that bulkhead, I drilled right into one of the hoses that brings the antifreeze or coolant from the engine to our water heater and coolant went everywhere. So right after I did that, I ordered a whole bunch of raw water, hot water, kind of radiator hose, reinforced hose, because I want to replace all of that hose in that entire fresh water system. Ever since we bought Atticus 2, I realized that that hose was looking pretty darn old and in fact there's even a couple spots where there's little pinhole leaks which has been kind of an issue i've not been looking forward to this but today is the day time to do some hose pulling so the first step is going to be draining all of the coolant from that whole fresh water system all right so we got not even a gallon of coolant out of the system i don't think that's all the coolant so i'm gonna have to be really careful removing the rest of the hoses with an eye out for coolant still being in there so i'm just gonna have to when i remove them have a bottle ready and try to drain it so the next step was to remove basically one hose at a time. The hose runs in this system are a little bit complicated. All the hose looks identical, so I really don't want to mix up which hose goes where. So I'm going to remove one bit of hose at a time, put in the new hose, and then move on to the next. Okay, 
there you go. It's really interesting when doing this kind of stuff with hose. Old hose is super stiff, super hard to manipulate and move around. New hose is 10 times easier to do all of that stuff on. So probably 80% of the work is removing old hose and maybe 20 is putting in new stuff. So I've noticed for a while now that there's a little bit of a leak of coolant at these fittings on the hot water heater. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to just remove those fittings and like reconnect them, reseal them. Uh, all right, here's one. Oh boy, well, I am very quickly getting sent down a rabbit hole. To remove this last fitting, I have to remove this part of the water heater. And so, I'm gonna do it just because I want to really fix this now, but we'll see. Okay, success. That was not as bad as I was fearing, so cool. did not drain that all the way. Baby in the engine room. Look. Hey, baby. Good girl. She's like, uh -oh. I'm just waking up. This is too oh much. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You know, on the one hand, it seems like whatever, the hoses are getting a little bit old, who cares? But these are super critical systems on the boat. The coolant hoses, if they were to fail, the engine wouldn't be able to run. Same with the raw water hose that I'm about to replace. So even though these seem sort of superficial in a way, it's actually my attempt to make sure that the engine is that much more robust, that the chances of it failing when we really need it just are reduced by that much. Got the hoses disconnected down here. Now I've just got to take off all the clamps that's holding the hose up there. It's less than ideal. Ah. Ah. Okay, one last one. Where are you? I hate to admit it, but I feel like this was easier when I was in my 20s. Okay, come on down. Oh. Oh. That was exhausting, <laughs> but I got it. Oh, okay. Well, that project is done. We got all new hoses in here. This is great. On to the next thing. Okay, so we've been getting a lot. I gotta keep my voice down. Issa's is sleeping. We have been getting a lot of comments about people that are concerned about the ventilation for our NAS network attached storage device, as well as our battery charger. And for good reason, I didn't address everything regarding how we were gonna keep these things cool, how we were gonna ventilate them. So with the NAS that we put down in this compartment, I actually ended up removing the door here. And so that way this is completely open to the air. The fans that keep everything cool have nice fresh air. It is technically now our flag locker as well, which is probably less than ideal, but still there's plenty of airflow in there. And also with the network locker behind the TV here, we were getting some heat built up in there as well. We had our router and our Starlink router, and that Starlink router gets pretty hot because it's sending a lot of power to that dish. And so I ended up drilling some holes into this door and installing some grills there. So we're getting plenty of airflow in there. And we also got a new printer that we have in this network locker, which is really exciting. I know this sounds so lame. I'm like concerned about even talking about this because we should be sailing and having adventures and stuff. But the fact is that when we are on the move, when we're going to new countries all the time, we're constantly needing to do things like scan our passports, scan different documents. We need to print out copies of everything. And typically what that means is we need to find some kind of a stationary store or someplace that has a printer or a copier. Sometimes that can be really, really hard to do. Like in developing countries, it can be a half a day mission just to 
to find like a scanner, copier, printer that we can do all of this stuff at. So like earlier today, we got Isabella's passport, which I think is hilarious. It looks <laughs> like ridiculous. I didn't even realize they gave babies passports. Her facial expression is too much, man. So right now we're applying with Residency Malta for Isabella to tag on to our visa. So basically that she could have a Maltese visa as well. And for that application, I had to scan and send over a copy of her passport with this new printer. I was able to do that in no time. And then I was able to send that to Residency Malta using the Starlink on the computer. So it's just like, I mean, things are getting real for us. Like our lives are getting so much simpler and easier. Now, a lot of people were also concerned about our battery charger that we installed and whether or not it would be overheating. Now, you may remember that we did a lot. We installed a fan, we drilled a giant hole and put a grill on the cabinet door where the fan would be drawing air from, but we didn't drill any holes or install any grills to allow the hot air from the cabinet to escape. The reason for that is because that little door is small and so I wasn't finding any good grills that would fit that little door I just didn't know what I wanted to do so what we've been doing is I've just been leaving that door totally open so that all the hot air can leave that cabinet I've been checking the battery charger it's not getting too hot but I do think that it's just kind of an eyesore. I don't like looking at it. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna real quick drill some holes into that locker door. They won't be too big. They'll be relatively discreet, but they'll allow hot air to escape. Okay, so that looks a lot better. It doesn't look perfect. I kind of messed up with the measurements a little bit, I feel like, but it's good enough. I mean, it looks a lot better than just keeping this thing open all the time, and that should allow plenty of airflow. Now, if I ever do find a grill that matches this just right, that's just the right size, I'll probably install it. Just, it'll look a little bit fancier, but that looks pretty good, man. So we're all set. Okay, well. I am running to a hair salon because I have my first moment alone without the baby <laughs> since my birthday. But what's really cool about this little hair salon is that it's right on the waterfront and it's super cool in this very Malta style, limestone, cavey vibe to it. Oh wow, that's really comfortable. <laughs> it's a massage chair. Oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> Bye -bye. Wow, oh my gosh, look at that. That's crazy. Okay, well, I've got a lot less hair and it feels so silky and smooth. I feel like a new person, ready to do this mom thing. Oh, I love it. Woo! <laughs> How's the baby? Oh. Got the light show going? Yeah, got the light show going, got the super creepy lady humming. She loves that Helmer. What do you think? Whoa, why'd you get it shorter? Well, I don't want to have to deal Holy with the long hair anymore. Like, yeah, you are a different person. I know, that's what I told her. I'm like, intimidated. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you, I mean, you're very pretty. You look beautiful. Yeah, but it's different. Well, uh, it's just uh, been years since you've had a different hair. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wow, very beautiful. Yeah. Do you like my haircut? Huh? Yeah, I like you. 